Good morning. Welcome to our service this morning. It's great to have you with us. For those in the room, glad to have you with us. Hopefully we're all going to kind of join in in celebrating. If you want to join in and clap, if you want to join in and play the tambourine, if you want to hum along, please do so. At home you have even more freedom. If you want to kind of share with, if you want to dance, please dance. No one else but those in your house and uh, the Heavenly Father will see you. If you want to sing as loud as you want to, please do so. Please disturb the neighbours. Um, and uh, if you want to clap, please join in. Let me encourage you to participate in church rather than just watch. I know it's difficult in these times. It's difficult in the room because we're not allowed to sing. But we can still participate in worship. He- Hebrew worship would talk about the physical engagement of joining together. So it wouldn't just be singing a song. Worship is not just singing. It's a whole body experience. If you want to lift your hands, if you want to clap, if you want to kneel, then please do so. Please feel free to do so. Um, and at home, I guess we're doing it on our own, but we're still worshipping. So please do join in the worship this morning. I want to encourage you this morning that I see people have joined us from around the world yet again. Great to have you with us. Former friends from South Africa, Turkey and Italy I've already seen this morning. So welcome to our friends from around the world. I want to encourage us this morning um, with a, a simple scripture from Joshua 1.9. And Joshua 1.9, what does it say? This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Do not be afraid. Let me encourage you in this time, do not be afraid. Be encouraged. Be bold. Be bold and press into God. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to worship God this morning. If you want to stand in the room, please feel free to do so. If you want to stand at home, please feel free to do so. But let me pray. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here today. Take your place in our hearts. Take your part in this meeting. Father God, we give you control. Lord, we say do what you will in our hearts, in our lives, in our situations, in our circumstances. Lord, would you do miracles today? Lord, would you stir up the fire of the Holy Spirit in each one of us? That not one of us would stay as we are. Lord, we'd move from where we are closer to where you want us to be. Father, help us to be a light in dark times. Help us to be a hope carrier, a hope bearer, someone who overflows with joy and shares love in all situations. And so, Father God, as we meet together, meet with us, we pray. We want to bring you praise. We want to bring you glory. We want to lift up our hands in praise and adoration today. Hear our prayer, hear our praise as we, as we sing and declare to you, as we raise an hallelujah. In Jesus' name, let's stand.
The King is alive. The King is alive. And our hope is built on Him. Our hope is built on Him because in Christ alone we stand. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength. Come. 
Jesus, I this morning. Hear, hear the overflow of our hearts this morning. Lord, as we give you praise and we give you thanks, we give you glory. Oh, Father, hear our prayer. Hear our cry. Hear our voices lifting high. <coughs> hear our hands lifted up to you. See our hands lifted up to you. See our hearts overflowing with an expression of who you are and what you've done. 
as we sung, Lord, even in the midst of the storm, you're there, Lord. Even in the midst of the battle, you are there. Father, we want to draw close to you. Draw close to us, we pray. In your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's just pause in our worship and just think about giving to God. An offering is part of worship. An offering is something of ourselves as we give to God. For those in the room, we can give into a bowl today. For those who give online, those who press the button, for those who set things up automatically, we give thanks for your faithfulness. As we give of our tithes and offerings this morning, it's an act of worship. So let's, let's be deliberate this morning. Let's pause and think about giving to God. Even if we're not physically going to put something in the bowl because we've already pressed the button somewhere. We've already done something. Let's still allow that to be an act of our worship this morning. Let's, let's offer what we've given to God today, this week, up to God. And say, Lord, receive these gifts. Use them for your glory. Receive the overflow of thanksgiving as I give to you. And if maybe you haven't pressed the button online and you just want to put some money aside and, and give it later, be honouring to God, but do it. As it's an expression of our love to God. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Receive these gifts and use them for your glory, Lord. Father, we are, we are like many churches around the world, no longer limited by walls or buildings. Lord, we can reach the other side of the world. You can reach the other side of the world through us, Lord God. And Father, as we see and we evidence every Sunday now, people joining us from around the world, different nationalities in the room, different nationalities at home, different nationalities in the church, Lord God. Lord, would you build your multicolored, multi-diverse, multi-peopled church. Draw us together, yes. we pray in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Is the mic on that? Yeah, okay. Um, so, we're going to have an opportunity this morning for a couple of testimonies. Um, one's on video that happened, I would say, you might say randomly. I might say inspired by the Holy Spirit. And then Matt's going to come and share a testimony as well. And if anybody else in the room's got a testimony, um, there'll be space after that. But uh, I was chatting to Lorraine. We were having a conversation online in the middle of the week. And we were just having a great conversation. And I just felt inspired by the Spirit. I was on Zoom. I felt I should press record. I recorded a little bit. I stopped and I recorded another, another little bit. And then I, I sent it to Lorraine and said, is it okay if I share this? And she said, yes. Uh, but you're just so this is this is not a professionally prepared in advance testimony. This was just a clip of a conversation that went on. But I'd just like you to listen to it. It's about four minutes long. Will you get a bit of Lorraine's past of her, of her testimony? But it also talks about who she is in Christ. Let's listen together. The thing that got put in my, in my heart. heart, even I was learning, you know, you start. But I was very passionate to pray. So. So obviously that God put it in me, mm -hmm. you know, even those years ago. And but you're still passionate about it even now, aren't you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's also something that you're gifted to do, and something that you you encourage others to do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, really, isn't it? determined and not giving up and win for Christ. Do you know what I mean? And I thought, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so, you know, it's all about, okay, if things getting hard, get up and keep going, you know. So if this is kind of the physical side and the spiritual side, it's helping me on my spiritual lesson, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but um, I, I think, Lorraine, you're a fantastic example to us. I mean, I, I, I don't understand all the, the challenges you have, but yeah. don't let it stop you. You, know, you keep on smiling. You're here. You, know, you never let technology get in your way. Um, yeah. You, you work your way through it. You stay connected. Uh, you're always smiling. You're always an encouragement to others. So, you know, you, know yeah. you, you might think it's a little thing, but every time you come on a call, you put a smile on my face. And you encourage me. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. 
And it's funny now, um, it had been, I've got a label now that I've always been called Schmarly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Oh, but that's because of what God's placed in you, isn't it? It's not because you were smiley because you had something to smile about. You are smiley inside almost. I probably, when I went to uh, the Bible down week, and that before I actually become a Christian, you know, being born again, um, I was churching. And when I was at the Pentecostal church, they did say about um, anyone interested to uh, to join. So to me, to be honest, I was being selfish. I yeah. wanted to have a holiday. <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is sound good. I can have a week holiday. But the deacon did explain to me, he said, it's not that kind of holiday. <laughs> he said, yeah, you'll be um, choosing seminar and you know, we'd be in the tent worshipping and listening to the priest. I said, well, that feel right. That's okay. But um, when I got there, I tell you, I couldn't stop crying. Really? They, these people had something that I didn't have and I wanted what they had. Right. And then cool, with the Chosen Day seminar, he said, he, he read all the list and, and the first one said about Holy Spirit. I said, oh, I'll do that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then um, my sister at the time, she said, I better go with Lorraine. And, uh, and then later on, the deacon said, how did you get on? I said, yeah, you know, obviously I was learning. And he said, have you given your heart to the Lord? I said, well, I have said a prayer. He said, well, let's do it again, he said. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I did. And then that evening, before the meeting start, um, I walked down to put like a loot system. And uh, the deacon said, look, I've just got to go somewhere. So when I was sitting in the chair, I sent God present on me. And I said, I, I said to the Lord, is that you, Jesus? Oh, yeah. I said, is that you? And, uh, and when the deacon come back and started meeting, when we worshiped, my hand went up in the air. <laughs> so I think the deacon think, well, something happened to yeah. her. Yeah. And then I felt the joy of the yeah. Lord. And so yeah. ever since then, the smile, I suppose, the joy of the Lord um, radiates. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go, a random conversation with Lorraine. What a glorious testimony. Let's hear from Matt now. Okay. Yeah, I haven't, haven't done one of these before. So um, I'm a little bit nervous, um, but as some of you who might have been here, some of you are online, some of you are in the room. I remembered in uh, mid-November, there was a slightly angsty man dressed all in black uh, came into this uh, building for the first time. Um, I'd just come back from uh, gigging, uh, doing an open mic tour, and... Um, I was, I've been slowly learning about Jesus, um, but to go further back than that, uh, when I was, I was from a, um, an atheist background and, uh, through Dave, uh, coming into my school as a Mr. Food, uh, Jack, I think was the other organization and one of my primary school, my year two teacher telling me the story of, uh, Jesus feeding the 5,000. Apparently the boy was called Matthew. I'm uh, I'm reading the Bible for Lent this year. Uh, yeah, as a seven-year-old boy, I um, dragged myself to church and my mom. And my mom now does a lot of uh, community work, which is inspired, I believe, largely through to Christ. And then I became uh, a little bit of a difficult uh, teenager and a wandering sheep, a prodigal son. Um, 
and uh, I got into all kinds of uh, things uh, and drifted away from God. And um, then through uh, going to a lot of festivals and being in highly competitive, highly uh, glamorous environments uh, I'm feeling very drained after a very tumultuous 2019 um, and one of my heroes uh, Kanye West converting to Christianity and my mum showing me um, some quotes from Isaiah even the birth of uh, young men even the backs of young men grow, may grow weary um, I, normally I'm a lot more confident sorry so um, yeah through all of that, I started coming to church, and uh, on the 18th of February 2020, I um, stopped smoking marijuana, and if anybody keeps up with the calendar still, I know Dave does, that's a whole year ago, and uh, that was through Christ that I came to this. Um, I now have more work than I know what to do with. Um, I produced about an hour and a half's worth of HD music last year in the year where it's very hard to produce music, and um, I've been exercising for um, seven months now, and uh, yeah, it was the best decision of my life. Um, so yeah, God is great, and uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you to a couple of people outside of the church, uh, my parents and a poet called Pete Cox. Thank you to Norman and Dave and the rest of the RCF family. Yeah, amen. Thanks, Matt. Let's just pause for a moment to pray. Um, I want to encourage you um, by reading just a, a little bit from... First, firstly, in encouraging us to pray, I want to say let's listen to. Um, prayer is not just having a to-do list and bringing it to God and going through our to-do list of the things that are our needs for the day. Prayer is a two-way conversation. And in uh, the famous hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, Forgive Our Foolish Ways, there's a verse in the middle of that that says this, Breathe through the heats of our desire, thy coolness, and thy balm. Let sense be dumb, let flesh retire. Speak through the earthquake, wind and fire. O oh, still small voice of calm. O oh, still small voice of calm. And I want to encourage you, let's get our ears open to listen to what God would say to us in our own private times, but even in our corporate prayer times. If God speaks to you as we pray to, together today, then please you know, share it, type it into, into one of the chat boxes, share it later, share it with somebody. But let's listen to God. And one of the things I've been listening to, we had, um, I'm not going to go into detail, but one, one of the things I want to do is to encourage people to get involved in helping us to lead prayer. You could record two or three minutes in the same way Lorraine and I just recorded that little video. It wasn't that perfect. There was a few little glitches in there. It doesn't matter. And I want to encourage you, if you want to record our prayer time, if you want to call two or three minutes of prayer, we can bring that on. You could come and lead prayer on a Sunday. Um, let's pray together as church. So let's pray. Father God, I want to thank you that you hear. I want to thank you that you are listening. You are moved by prayer. And so, Father, we will pray because we know you listen. And we will pray because you, we know that, like the persistent widow, you are moved by prayer. And so, Father, we will come to you with our needs, with our concerns, with our thanksgiving, with our, with our offerings of prayer, with our intercession, with our standing in the gap for others. Lord, we will come and we will pray. And so, Lord, I want to say, I want to say this morning... Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Father, I want to pray for those who are 
need an uplift right now. Father, would you bring an uplift to them, O oh God. Father, those who need a turbo boost, Lord, would you bring a turbo boost of hope, of love, of joy, of peace. Father, would you also make that a, an expression of physical things? Lord, would you bring a turbo boost of immune systems, of vitality? Father, for those who are struggling to breathe, bring their breath again. Father, for those whose circulation systems are slowing down, Father, bring vitality again. And Father, we too pray for those who we love who don't yet know you. Lord, would you broadcast your name again? Lord, through your church, would you share and broadcast and share and multiply your word? The seed would go out and take root and bear fruit, we pray in your mighty name. And finally, we pray for those, Lord, Lord, who lead us. We thank you for the leaders around the world, but Lord, we pray for them. We pray that you give them wisdom, that they'd help to draw us together as nations, as cities, as, as people groups, as businesses, as families, as churches. Lord, help them to draw us together, that Lord, we would be your hands and feet in action to see your kingdom come and your will done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 Is the mic okay, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so, just before we come around the sermon this morning, Sunday School, you are looking at, this morning, the Top's Guide to the Bible. You're looking at the whole Bible from beginning to end. I know Judy sent some materials out yesterday, I saw them. So, please enjoy your Sunday School. Father, I pray that in Sunday School, the children would learn something more of you, learn something more of your book. And, and Lord, they'd have fun as they do it. Even though they're not together, Lord, them, let them still have fun. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. This morning, uh, one of my intentions for 2021, despite um, lockdown, was I wanted to bring younger people in, in, into all that we did. A couple, of, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had Josh and Caitlin share. Josh used to be part of our youth group here a number of years ago. He's now a medical doctor and Caitlin's a teacher. Um, but they shared with us just a couple of weeks ago. This, this week, we've got Matt Richards. He comes from a church in Swansea called Cornerstone, and he's going to be sharing with us. I'm going to pray, Matt, I'm really looking forward to your word this morning. Um, he's such a passionate young man. Um, we're going to catch something from him, I'm sure. So let me pray, and then I'll hand over to Matt. Father God, we want to hear your word this morning. Lord, would you speak to us? Lord, would you speak through Matt? Let our hearts be open. Uh, let us be moved by your word this morning. Lord, would you sow seeds in our hearts that will bear fruit, not just over the next couple of days, but over weeks and months, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Matt. Hi everyone, it's great to be with you today and to spend this time with you. My name is Matthew and I'm here in Swansea and I'm on the team here at Cornerstone Church. And when Dave emailed me and asked if I would share a talk with you, I had just finished recording one for our own church. We've just started a new series as we continue to journey through this lockdown season together. I'm not sure which number we're on now. Is it lockdown three, lockdown four? I'm losing count but I thought I would share it with you while it's still fresh and I hope that it encourages you as well where you are over in Runnymede Christian Fellowship. So before we get into it, why don't I just pray for us? Yeah, Father, I thank you for all those who are part of Runnymede Fellowship and all those who are watching this today. And I pray, Lord God, would you bless them and strengthen them. I thank you that you love each one and that each one is important to you. And as they go through their service today and hear this talk as well, I pray, Holy Spirit, would you speak life and strength and meet us with your love and your power and your joy for our lives. So I thank you, Lord, that you're with us. Speak to us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoy and I hope God encourages you as well. And hopefully one day I might be able to see you in person. Wouldn't that be amazing? But in the meantime, here we go. Hi, everyone. 
It's great to be with you today and to spend this time with you. And yeah, we're going to be kicking off a new series. Before we get into it, let me share with you a picture that a friend of mine, an old friend from my primary school, he tagged me in on Facebook a little while ago. And here we are, this is me as an eight or nine year old boy, I think, in my favorite t-shirt, my Manchester United shirt. And back then I used to wear this pretty much every day after school and outside of school. And I loved Man United. I even had David Beckham's name on the back. So you have to forgive me for my childish ways. I've obviously grown up since then. And now obviously Swansea City is the only team worthy of my support. But back then I was a massive Man United fan. And I love playing football and wearing this t-shirt, imagining that I was playing with David Beckham or whatever. But anyway, one day I remember it was on a Sunday and it was, uh, I was playing outside our church building before one of the meetings. And one of the adults, as they were walking inside, they saw me kicking the ball around. And they said something like, oh, uh, keep practicing because they'll be calling you up next. And in my like eight year old's imagination, this just sparked something. And I began to imagine that, yes, you know, maybe one day on Friday tea time, you know, I might be in the house having tea with the family and suddenly the phone would ring and maybe Sir Alex Ferguson would be on the other end of the line and you know, he'd be saying to my dad, look, we've had a few injuries, you know, Beckham's injured, Gig has got a cold and we're going to need Matthew to come up to Manchester, he's going to need to play for us tomorrow. And in my mind, this was like the dream scenario. Well, needless to say, that uh, never actually materialised. But here's the thing for us this morning that I want to talk about, which is this. That for us, when we follow Jesus, every single one of us is invited to play. Every single one of us has a part and everyone is called to join in with Jesus' mission in the world where he wants to bring his goodness and the love of God into this world right now. Just like Jesus said in John 14, he said, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. And a major part of Jesus' plan and mission whilst he was on this earth was to pass on his ministry to his followers and to multiply it so that his church, through every generation, right down to you and to me, would continue to do the things that Jesus did and to bring his goodness and his love and his life and the goodness of his kingdom into the world right now where we are. Just like we pray in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And to usher these things in into our present whilst we wait for Jesus to return and bring them back fully. And so today we're going to be starting a new series called Journey to the Cross. And this is inspired by a pivotal moment in Jesus' life that Luke records. And Luke records firstly Jesus' birth. And we've been looking at that in our Christmas series. And then the next section of Luke's gospel is mostly Jesus' ministry around Galilee and the Sea of Galilee, where we see that he called followers and disciples to follow him. And as well as the 12 disciples, there was much more than that. And we see there was men and women who followed Jesus and traveled with him whilst he went around healing the sick and teaching and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God to the people and doing amazing things. And now at this moment, there's a shift and it's like a new chapter begins uh, after this Jesus was moving around Galilee. And this is what it says in Luke 9, verse 51. As the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. So we see in this moment how Jesus fixes his eyes on what's ahead. And so begins what is known as Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. And as we know, it's at Jerusalem sometime later where Jesus would give his life for us on the cross. And that's because, you know, as people, we were made for relationship with one another and for relationship with God. And that's one of the reasons lockdown's been so hard, isn't it? Because we miss seeing each other, because we're made for relationship. And in the same way, we're made for relationship with God. But the Bible tells us that humanity rejected God, turned away from God, tried to live independently from him, thinking, you know, that they knew better, if you like. And when people rejected God, it, it led to a separation in our relationship with God. And when we were separated from God, who's the author of life, then death entered the world. But God, just like we long to see one another again and get over lockdown, not just so we can go to restaurants, but so we could see each other, 
You know, God, he longs to get over that separation and to be a part of our lives because he loves us. And that's why he came into the world himself as a man, Jesus Christ. And God came into the world as a human being so we could see what God is like, so we could see he was close. And ultimately God did that so he could live a perfect life as a man and die on the cross. And when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't die for anything he'd done wrong, but he died for people's rejection of God, people's sin, and the things that we have done wrong. Because Jesus hadn't done anything wrong himself, he was raised to life again, and he defeated death. He didn't stay dead, but he came back to life again three days later. And that means for each one of us, if we put our trust and our hope in Jesus, if we ask him to forgive us for the things that we've done wrong, and if we choose to follow him, then our relationship with God is restored. Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit, who is God and lives within us right now. And we have the promise of eternal life with God forever. And it's a relationship with God we can walk into and step into right now as we accept Jesus and what he's done for us. And what's amazing about Jesus is, you know, we see here in this verse that Jesus knew all the way down the line what was ahead for him. But because he loves us so much, he resolutely set out on that mission to Jerusalem so he could rescue us and save us despite the cost to himself that he would give his life for us on the cross. And at the same time here, we see something else as well. Let me read that verse to you again. It says, as the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And here we see another key part of Jesus' thinking and one that sometimes we miss. This part here where it says, as the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Now, Jesus knew that after his resurrection, he was going to return to heaven. And so for Jesus, a major part of his plan for his time whilst he was on earth was to train and equip his followers to do the same things that he was doing after he went to heaven. So Jesus knew he was going to go to heaven and send us the Holy Spirit. And so he wanted his church, his followers, you and me, to continue the things that he had been doing, to continue his mission on the earth because we are Christ's body. That's what the Bible, how the Bible describes the church, so that we could bring God's love and goodness to the world, share about his rescue, multiplying it and equipping new followers of Jesus to do the same. So it's interesting here, this little section of called Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, which is about 10 chapters of Luke. The major thing that it looks at, it's not, doesn't really talk about the journey and the geography, and it's not like a travel guide, but it's all about what does it mean to be a disciple? What does it look like to be a follower of Jesus? And you know, for us, when we read the gospels, when we read them through, it's not just like information. So we know the type of things that Jesus did and the type of person he was. And we really think, oh, that's interesting. Jesus did this, Jesus was like that. It's so much more than that. It's actually written almost like a training manual or as a guide. So we see it And just like the first disciples were trained by Jesus, so that we read it and we get trained as well. And we see, well, that's what Jesus did. And that's what the disciples did. And that's what I'm called to do too. So how then did Jesus train his followers? What did it look like? Well, we see right from the start that Jesus, he didn't just go about like preaching and healing and doing amazing things, but actually he began to recruit and equip and train followers straight away. So you remember the famous verse when Jesus calls Peter and Andrew, two of the first disciples, and he says to them, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He didn't say to them, you know, come follow me and have a watch and you'll really enjoy. But he said, no, come follow me because I'm going to train you. I'm going to equip you. I'm going to make you into something. And that's what we we're called to too. And Jesus, he was like a classic teacher. I don't know if you can remember your favourite teacher from school or your, you know, the best one that you had. Well, Jesus, he was a brilliant teacher. And the first thing that we see he did was that he modelled it for his disciples. You know, he taught and he healed and he did amazing things and they watched and were amazed. But then as the time went on, Jesus started to get them involved and they helped Jesus do these things. So when Jesus fed the 5,000, for example, he turned to his disciples and said, you feed them. And then as we know, you know, they brought fish and some bread and Jesus blessed it. But he gave it to his disciples and they were the ones to distribute it amongst the crowd. It multiplied in their hands and they were a part of that miracle. And then 
after doing it with them and doing things together, we see how Jesus sent out his disciples to do the same things that he was doing, but he sent them out on their own. And in Luke 9, this is what it says. One day, Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And Jesus here, he empowered his followers to go and do what he had just been doing. He sent them out with authority in his name, just like ambassadors, in the same way that he sends us out in his name. And I remember the first time that I prayed for someone to be healed. I was 15 years old and a few of us from the church had gone to Romania and we were helping out with the church there for a couple of weeks. And uh, towards the end of the trip, we were in, uh, one day we were in this big kind of school hall and we'd been praying for people. And Suzanne and myself had teamed up and we were praying for people. And this one lady came and asked if we'd pray for her. And she was a school teacher in her 20s. And uh, she asked if we'd pray for her eyesight. And she needed glasses, but I think it was a little more severe than that as well. And so we said, yeah, sure, we'll pray for you. And she said, well, what, what, and we asked her, well, what can you see? And uh, she looked around the room and basically at the end of the hall, there was this big clock, um, like the one on my wall here, a bit bigger than that. And we asked her, well, you know, can you tell the time? Can you make it out? And she said, no, I can't. So we said, okay, let's pray for you. And so we prayed and we said, in the name of Jesus, we command these eyes to be healed and this eyesight to be healed. Amen. Something like that. And we said, open your eyes. How is it now? And she opened her eyes. She looked around the room and she looked up at the wall and at the clock. And then she began to jump up and down. She's putting her hands in the air. She was literally woohoo, woohooing like that. Me and Suzanne were a bit taken aback, like what, where's that come from? And she said, I can see, I can see the clock. And she could see the clock and she could make out the time. And she was amazed. I was absolutely shocked. And I remember just coming back from that trip thinking, wow, I I can't believe it that, you know, Jesus would use me and that I could pray for someone they would be healed. But you know what? Jesus can use any one of us who follow him. That's what he intended all along when he said, anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I have been doing. And next we begin to see that Jesus, he starts to ramp up the training as he heads on this journey to Jerusalem. One of the very first things that he does is he calls another 72 and he sends them out in the same way. So we read this in Luke. It says, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send workers into his harvest field. Go, heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Now this is really interesting. Why does Luke record the sending of the 72? And it's almost exactly the same as the 12 that he's just sent. Why does he, you know, put it in twice? Well, clearly he's showing how Jesus was multiplying those who would do what he had done. And it's like he's intensifying it as well. He's thinking, you know, I'm heading to Jerusalem now. I've got to get a move on. And so he sends out even more. And here we see Jesus' plan all along that his followers would learn to do what he was doing and that they would pass it on and that they would pass it on right down to us today that we can go out in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, we might be tempted to think, well, you know, we know the 12 disciples and even the 72 here, maybe they were some kind of like elite group. You know, they'd been with Jesus. They'd seen it firsthand and we might count ourselves out. But what did Jesus tell the 72 to pray before he sent them out? He said this, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord to send more workers. So Jesus is saying to the 72, Ask the Lord for even more. The 72 is just a start. And then where are these new workers going to come from? They're the very people that Jesus' followers are going to reach. They're the harvest that in turn become the workers and so on. It's just like the Great Commission at the end of Matthew's Gospel, where Matthew records the last thing Jesus says before going to heaven. And Jesus said this, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So here we see that Jesus, he wants believers to be taught everything that his very first disciples were taught. 
everything. And what does that include? Well, we've just seen Jesus telling them to go out, to heal the sick, to tell them the kingdom of God is at hand and do the same things that Jesus was doing. So let's be encouraged that when we read what Jesus was doing and what his followers were doing, that we're invited and we're called to do the same things today. So what are some of those things? Well, number one, we've mentioned it a couple of times already, is praying for the sick, praying for people to be healed. It says here, Jesus sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And over the years as a church, you know, we've seen many people healed as we pray and we've got loads of great stories. But you know, even during lockdown, we've been praying for people and we've seen people healed. In the last few weeks, we've been doing the Kingdom Intensive uh, with Bruce, which is uh, a course that explores how we can grow in the things that Jesus did and, and, and learn this more. And as we've been going through the sessions, we've been praying for people and we've had loads of people say that they've been healed and emailing in their testimonies afterwards as well. Things like back pain and gum problems, infections and UTI infections. We've had loads of people saying, wow, I've been healed. And even in our own small groups, when people have been praying for people. I know in one of the student small groups, uh, one of the girls back in the first lockdown, I think, she had shingles and uh, she was trying to study for her exams. And Chloe and some of the others, they prayed for her over um, Zoom uh, during small group. And they, Chloe tells me that she remembers, you know, looking at the girls, she looked in the mirror and she turned back at the camera, shocked, because the shingles, the rash that she had from the shingles disappeared when they prayed and she was completely healed. And so this is the same, we can do this for our friends or our family or people that we know over the phone or over Zoom when they tell us, you know, that they're not feeling well or they, you know, that they're ill or something, we can offer to pray. And even when we're out and about as well, I know obviously, you know, everything's closed, but you know, the supermarkets are open or the chip shop. I remember praying for a lady in the chip shop once and because uh, she'd injured her, her wrist and she was there all like kind of all strapped up serving me chips. I remember a couple of years back, Jess and Helen prayed for a lady in the carpet shop um, that they were buying a carpet off and she had told them how she'd had earache and uh, for weeks and weeks and was struggling with uh, pain in her ears. And so they prayed for her in the shop and she got healed straight away. So I don't think carpet shops are open. I don't know, they might be. But we can do these things, you know, when we're out and about and we see people, obviously keeping two meters and all that. But let's be ready to offer prayer because God loves to heal. And then a second thing that we can uh, grow in and that we can do, that the disciples did, is we can hear God's voice. And we can hear God's voice to encourage others about how he loves them and cares for them. Think of all the times that Jesus did this when the Holy Spirit would reveal to him uh, information about people and their lives so he could show them that God knows them and God, ca God cares. So for example, the, you know, the woman at the well, when Jesus met with her and Jesus shared how she'd had trouble in her relationships. And um, wow, for this woman, when she heard that Jesus you know, knew this, well, she was amazed and she believed who Jesus was. And the whole town, loads of people in that town ended up believing Jesus because of her testimony. One of my favourites is Zacchaeus. You know, Jesus hadn't met Zacchaeus before, but he goes into Jericho. And what happens when he spots Zacchaeus up the tree? Jesus called him by name. Jesus knew what his name was. And in the same way, we can hear from God. And in the Bible, it calls it a word of knowledge, where God gives us some information or insight about someone that we wouldn't otherwise know, but so that we can encourage them and so that they would know that God knows them and that he cares for them. And uh, Bruce, who's been leading our Kingdom Intensive, I've seen him do this loads of times uh, when I've been able to travel with him. And he's, we've been on aeroplanes together and he's been chatting to the person next to him and God's given him a word of knowledge to speak into their lives or to encourage them. I remember one time we were next to this businessman and they were both talking about businesses because Bruce used to um, work for like big business back uh, in the day when he was a young man. And uh, they were chatting about stuff. And then uh, he turned to him and he said, oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian and, you know, I believe that God sometimes speaks to us and shows us things to encourage us and to let him know that he cares. And I believe that God has just shown me something for you. Could I share it with you? And the man said, oh, yeah, sure. And Bruce shared with him how he could see the man was worried about some things going on in his family and that God cared about that. And then Bruce prayed for him. And it's like, wow, it was amazing to see. The guy was really shocked. 
And I remember this happened to me once. I was in the back of a taxi and I felt God speak to me and give me something for the taxi driver. And I can't even remember what it was now. I remember sharing it with him and praying for him and him being blown away by it. And these are often, you know, these are like kind of ordinary things. There's nothing spectacular. It's just, you know, little details and things. But we know what it's like when we hear from God, how it encourages us, even when it's just such a small thing. This happened to me recently. I got a text from an old friend who I haven't seen for years and years. But he said, you've just been on my mind and I feel like God's um, been asking me to pray for you. And he got in touch just to encourage me. And I was really encouraged and to know that, you know, that God cares. You know, I know God cares, but it reminds me that God cares. And we can do this for our friends, for our family, but even people that we don't really know, people that we bump into. We can ask God to speak to us, to them, to encourage them, which is amazing, isn't it? Okay, and then lastly, very briefly, number three, is we can ask God for words of wisdom. How many times do we see with Jesus that people came up to him, the religious leaders, and they tried to trip him up. They tried to trap him with awkward questions, political questions, things that could get him in trouble, things that could get him arrested. But Jesus, time and time again, when he answered them, he had such wisdom and his answers astounded them. And no doubt in those moments, he would be asking the Holy Spirit, you know, give me wisdom, give me wisdom for this question, give me wisdom for my answer. And we see how Jesus, you know, spent time in prayer in these things. And Jesus, he encouraged his followers that they could do the same when they would face this problem. He said to them this, God will give you the right words at the right time, for it is not you who will be speaking, it will be the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. And so for us too, we might not have politicians trying to trap us with awkward questions, but you know, in all kinds of situations, we need God's wisdom and we can ask for it. You know, especially during lockdown, maybe with family life or work life and different things that we face. We can ask God, God, give me wisdom and have a word of wisdom for a situation that we might not know what to do otherwise. In James 1, it says this, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. And God loves to help us and guide us in everyday situations. And so these are three of many things that we saw Jesus do, which he also taught his followers to do, and which, for, uh, and which are for us as well today. And as you know, there's, you know, there's much more as we explore our New Testament and explore the Bible and look through the Gospels and see the things that Jesus did. But today, let's be encouraged to go back and to look and to realise that we're called as well to join in with the things that Jesus did. So why don't I pray and ask the Holy Spirit to fill us again with his power, that we would know that Jesus is sending us out as his followers to bring his goodness and life and love and power into the world right where we are, even today during lockdown. So let me pray for us. Father God, I thank you that you send us out as part of your mission to rescue the world and that we are sent out in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, I pray for every single one of us watching here now and I ask, would you fill us with your power? Fill us with your strength. And as we go out, I pray, would you give us the courage and the boldness to respond to what you want to do? That we would offer to pray for people. That we'd ask you to speak to us to encourage others. When we need it, we would ask you for wisdom, as well as all the other things that you want to do through us. So help us with this, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Fantastic. Well, it's great to be with you this morning. And I just want to say as well, if you're watching today and you've never said yes to that relationship with Jesus, which I described earlier on in the talk, I want to encourage you that this is for you and you can say yes today. And if you want to, you could just say a simple prayer with me like this and you could receive Jesus' gift of eternal life for yourself. And you could start on that journey of following Jesus and beginning to do the things that Jesus did. So you could just pray, Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for me. Would you come into my life? Forgive me for the things I've done wrong. Help me to follow you and to discover your purpose for me and to do the things that you did. I thank you. You've given me a place in heaven with you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Fantastic. Well, it's great to be As you can see, a passionate young man. He's got such a big smile on his face. Just as we were talking about Lorraine having a smile on her face, he's got a big smile on his face. <laughs> uh, and what did we learn? We learned that, that, that Jesus is training his disciples. He's training you and me. And uh, we can all just get started. Um, he, he gave us some simple examples where he just said, I prayed. I prayed the best prayer I could pray, and then we saw God do something. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that you could be his disciples in action. You could be in a queue with your face mask on, waiting to go into a retail store and just chatting to the person behind you or in front of you. Queues are a great place to talk. And I know it's a bit more difficult with masks, but that means we just have to raise our volume, which means other people need to listen. So actually, other people can live in the overflow too. And I want to encourage you, God can speak to you. God can speak through you. He talked about words of knowledge and words of wisdom. We can ask God to give us those in our daily life, not just for ourselves, but also for others. Um, and I know on the, on the, on the uh, text chat that was going on during the sermon, yes, you can listen to the sermon later. I'm going to share some notices in a moment, but one of the things I particularly want to get much better at doing is hopefully we'll be back on YouTube in just over a week's time. Um, that, 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 there's a sign of that coming. Um, and, but we are going to have the service live streamed on Periscope, on the website, on YouTube and Facebook. It'll there be on all of those four sites later to watch later. So if you miss it or if you want to watch it again, you can do that. If you want to share it with someone, you can just click on share and send it to them by through Facebook or whatever way you want to do it. And so if you think of someone as, with, as you're listening to the sermon, it will just be a three clicks away and you've suddenly shared something with somebody else. <laughs> so let me encourage you. Um, be God's agents. Be God's agents to amplify the message. And that can just be a simple thing of two or three clicks. It doesn't have to be anything more embarrassing than just saying, hey, I thought you might be interested in this and sending it on to them. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is probably they ignore you for a few days. But actually, if it speaks to them, it speaks to their spirit, and they come to Christ, wow, you were part of that. Wouldn't that be a fantastic thing to be part of? So just as we kind of... Um, I, I, I do want to say, as, as Matt prayed, as Matt shared, I want to say, we believe that God responds to prayer. That's why we focus on prayer. That's why after church this morning, I will say, if anybody wants to stay and you need prayer, socially distanced, because God, God doesn't need to be close enough. He's close enough already. God is already socially distanced because he's spirit. But actually, uh, if you need prayer in the room, please stay and we'll pray for you. If you need prayer online, please let us know. We'll ring you and we'll pray. We're a church who believe God is moved by prayer. And so we encourage people to pray. And that could be you and me. Just think about what Matt shared there. Matt shared there that he prayed and the lady could see. He was just a teenage boy. You know, God doesn't, we don't have to have a PhD in the Bible to be able to pray. And in fact, we don't have to have much to be able to lead someone to Christ. All we need to do is to be a few seconds ahead of them in our understanding. Uh, we went to the youth camp that I was at I was sharing a testimony, and one of our young people uh, prayed for someone, led them to Christ in the group. That person later on, over coffee in the youth lounge, led someone else to Christ. He'd only been a Christian about two hours, and he led someone else to Christ. You know, all we need to do, and if, if people ask us questions we don't know the answers to, we we'll say, I'll go and find out. That's a great way to be a disciple, is to go and find out. If you don't know, ask someone. And as Norm very regularly quotes, if you don't know someone, ask someone who, because ask me, because I know someone. If, if I don't know the answer, I know someone who does. So let's continue to be a church that prays. Time for some notices, just some practical information here. Um, memory verse from last week. Can anybody remember what it was? It was from John 15, verses 12 and 13. Actually, I'd love for some people to, if you want to record the memory verse and record you memorizing it and send it in, at this moment I would play it. 
Uh, but let's read it out together. Our memory verse from last week says this. My commandment is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Great scripture. Great scriptures to be encouraged by. Uh, we've been doing, um, as we come up to 12 months of being in lockdown or being, dealing with COVID, we've been asking the question of church members just saying, okay, what should we keep on doing? What should we stop doing? What should we start doing? And I shared a few insights on that, and I'm going to do that until we've run out of all the insights. But our response to some of those, we've had 22 so far, um, is we need to improve our visibility and access. So um, I've already, I'm already going to say, um, if you haven't got the app on your phone, there's a church app already available. Just go and look up Faith Life Church Community, and you can have the app on your phone. So if you can't go, do it on the website, you can do it on your phone. Uh, some of the th things people wanted was, for example, to be able to look at the memory verse. To be reminded what that was. That's already on the app each week. Um, people wanted to better share prayer needs and share them safely and securely. I don't want to put them on the website because I don't think that's the right place to put them because it's a community of people. We don't want to put that out and, and share our prayer needs publicly, but we can share them as a community. So please do install it on your phone. If you need help, want to know more about that, um, you, uh, that's certainly something that you can do. So we want to improve our visibility and our access. Uh, we also want to encourage people to get involved. There's been a number of steps up, even in the last couple of weeks. You might have noticed, hopefully, the cameras and the microphones are more in control. That's because Matt and Paul have volunteered to help me to manage that. So they're sitting in the background just switching between cameras and microphones. And other people help to volunteer to be on the door. And other people helping to volunteer to lead Bible studies. I had a number of different people leading Bible studies over the last few weeks. Um, I'm doing a virtual drop-in, so for, you know, I can't do face-to-face -face coffee, I can't do Costa, I do like Costa or, or Starbucks or whatever your preferred brand is, but we can't do it face-to-face -face yet, I'm sure it's going to come, but we could do a virtual coffee. So Monday, Wednesday and Friday I've been doing a drop-in coffee and people have been dropping in and having a conversation with me. I just turn the camera on, if nobody turns up, I just carry on working, if somebody turns up we have a conversation. And you could be part of that, maybe you could host a coffee. Um, just for some people to pop in and have a chat. One of the things that people are desperate for is conversation and community. And if we can sow a few seeds of encouraging words into those conversations, who knows what God can do? Um, also, realize that there was quite a few things that people asked about that actually we we're already doing. And so I thought, okay, we need to get better at communicating that. If people don't know that, we need to work on that. So I'm going to start a frequently asked question area on the website so that if you're not sure, that's the thing. So please do keep on asking questions. Because if you're asking the question, I'm sure there's going to be 5, 10, maybe 20 or even more people who are asking that question. I'll answer the question, I'll put it up on the website, and therefore if you don't know, that will be one of the first places to go to find out. And finally, uh, we're going to work and refresh on the website. There's a, there's a whole set of pages we need to update. And so if anybody's willing to help with that, that would be fantastic. Um, our, service, our activities this week, as usual, as you can see, our service after church, we always have a Zoom meeting. We can't do face-to-face -face coffee, but Julie hosts a Zoom meeting. Um, and please come and join from 12.30 till 1 o'clock. We'll be available on Zoom. Just click on the link in the calendar and you're straight in there. Um, we're working with all of these meetings and saying if no one turns up in the first half of the meeting, it's okay for the leader to switch off. Um, we're not going to hang around for an hour and, and no one turn up, so please do get there early if you can. But that's the Zoom meeting after church every Sunday. Our midweek Bible studies on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And then our prayer meetings on Friday and Saturday. Our small groups are looking, still looking at, on the Wednesday night we're looking at Secrets Unlocked in Genesis. Uh, we had a fantastic look at dinosaurs last week, so that was really quite interesting to look at, uh, look, look at how scripture lines up with the geological record. Um, we're looking at our identity in the midst of storms in the daytime Bible study, and that was a really fascinating time this week. Um, I want to encourage you to keep on praying for Uganda, uh, one of the places we're connected with, and particularly Abba Father's house, uh, the orphanage there in Jinja. Um, the extension phase two is coming very close to being completed. We've got some other micro projects we need to work on associated with that expansion. Getting a water tank, um, extending the kitchen already, build, putting a soak away in place and putting a container in. They're all 
projects that probably each cost less, a few hundred pounds, maybe up to a thousand pounds. But if you want to take one of those projects to go away and raise funds for it, that would be a fantastic thing to do. And if you'd like to get involved with church, please do let me know. I'm, fa- I'm really encouraged by the number of people who stepped up and volunteered. We could do more. There are plenty of examples on there. For example, um, one of the things we listened to was some people liked the family album, some people didn't. And so what do you do in that situation? Where some people like it and some people didn't. So we just took it out of the main service. So it's played before the service and it's played after the service. It's now coordinated together into a complete video. You send all the pictures in, it gets created into a video very quickly, quickly with some subtitles. There's a little job someone could do every week. So there's just some examples. And my Bible verse for the week coming up is from, from Matthew's sermon there. I'll just extend it to a second verse there. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 27 and 28. Oops. Let's sing our final song as we worship God this morning. I believe there are no birthdays this week. As we close our service, let me pray. Father God, thank you for meeting with us. Thank you for joining close to us, O oh God. Help us to know your touch. Help us to know your empowerment. <coughs> Father, help us to glorify you. Lord, as Matt in his testimony shared that scripture in Isaiah, which said, even the, you, even the young will grow weak, but we can soar on wings like eagles. Lord, help us to catch the wind of your spirit, we pray. And Father, help us to step into this week 
and be your hands and feet, your eyes and ears. Go out into the world. Go out into the digital world and share good things with others, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a fantastic week, whatever you're doing. Be blessed. If you need prayer, please stay. Um, uh, Whatever you're doing, uh, do share it with others. Have a great week. Bye for now. Jesus Christus, he was in the last of the last of the last of the last of the Para que todo aquel que en él crea Nicht verloren werden But have eternal life Thank you.